So on YouTube, we had a, had a question from Hannah M and she asked, these videos are so useful. Thank you. Please, could you maybe do one about the best ski slopes to work on in the ski season when on a working holiday visa? That's a good question. Yeah. I like it. So, um, well, we uh, we did discuss with Laura and we picked like three that we think are uh, going to be the best ski yeah. fields. Now, to be quite honest, Laura did work in uh, two different ski fields around New Zealand already. So she has the prime experience on, yeah. on these things. And there are ski fields in New Zealand on both the north and the south. And a lot of people only think about the south. And but remember, there is some on the north and on the south. And so it's definitely worth considering. But um, after this very short introduction, Laura, <laughs> take it away. All right, so the first place that I would recommend is Mount Ruapehu, which is um, two of the largest ski fields in New Zealand, and they're located in the central North Island on an active volcano, which is really cool, but nothing to really worry about. Um, so on Mount Ruapehu, yep, yeah, there's two different ski fields, and you can, uh, you can work for either one, but they are owned by the same company, so when you do get your your ski field pass and everything, you actually have access to two different ski fields, which actually makes it really worth it. Um, but the good thing about actually working in the Mount Ruapehu area is that Mount Ruapehu is only really surrounded by small villages and really small towns. So in terms of spending your money outside of um, when you're working, there's actually not really much opportunity to, other than to obviously buy your groceries and just, you know, your normal everyday stuff. Um, otherwise, all the things to do around Mount Ruapehu tends to be hikes and outdoorsy things like that. So Mount Ruapehu is a really good base if you actually want to save some money. Um, obviously, because you're not tempted to spend all your money on like nights out and things. Um, so yeah, that is a really good thing. But uh, the downside of Mount Ruapehu is that um, there's often, yeah, it's not very consistent weather. So you might find that at least once a week, the mountain is closed. And if that's like, just happens to fall on the day, um, one day every week when you're meant to be working, that can get a little bit annoying if you do lose a full day of work, because obviously you don't get paid for the days that you're not working. Um, so that that's one little um, setback from working on Mount Ruapehu. Um, and so the places where people usually base themselves when working on Mount Ruapehu, if you're working on Whakapapa, which is the largest ski field in New Zealand, you would usually base yourself in the little Whakapapa village, which is just at the bottom of the ski slope, or well, not ski slope, but at the bottom of the mountain, or in National Park Village, another really small village where there's not really that much to do around there. But if you're on the Taroa side, which is the other ski field, they have a slightly larger town, which does have a few more things to do. There's a few restaurants. It's more of a touristy place. Um, so there's a lot more going on on that side if you were looking for something a little bit more social, maybe. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much Mount Ruapehu. Um, but that's on the North Island. If you do want to experience a ski season on the South Island, a really popular place to go is Queenstown. Um, that's pretty much whenever people, whenever anyone, like if they know only one thing about the ski season in New Zealand, they're probably going to think, oh yeah, Queenstown. So Queenstown is a is the polar opposite of Mer of um, Mount Ruapehu. It is super social so many things to do there but that also means that it's really expensive <laughs> even the cost of rent is sky high it's probably higher than like most places in new zealand so you will be spending a lot of money while you're working there but on yeah, the during the during the winter season uh queenstown yeah. is actually most expensive to live in more expensive to live in than auckland oh yeah it's going to be incredibly expensive to live and work and most people that actually work in Queenstown do not earn enough money to be able to cover rent yeah. and, uh, and and food in, aside from living quite far away from the town. Yeah, so for instance, when I, I was actually working in Queenstown and I actually lived in a house with I think 16 other people and I had like a sort of 
sort of half converted room in the garage and that's where I could actually find the most affordable rent so it's you really have to like you're not going to find anything luxurious if you're trying to save money um there's definitely ways around it like I said like I made it work but it is it is super expensive and obviously there's lots of bars and there's lots of you know um reasons to spend money in the end and also like groceries aren't necessarily that cheap either just it is a huge tourist town so you will be paying the tourist prices for your everyday living um so it is quite expensive but on the flip side there are two um ski fields which again they're owned by the same company so but you do have to actually pay separate prices um for the ski fields but that i think if you're working there you, that's not really an issue um but yeah that is actually quite hard to get a job with nz ski which are um the um, owners of remarkables and coronet peak is very competitive they have a lot of return staff but if you do get the chance uh, it's really awesome and um yeah uh but yeah their their ski fields are actually open throughout usually like they have very rarely closed days so you will be getting to work most of the time yeah so moving on to our final place where you could do a ski season is wanaka which is really close to queenstown but it's known more as being the quieter version of Queenstown so um so yeah so you might find it a little easier to uh, get yourself accommodation and it's not it's still there's still a lot of social things to do around there but it would be a little bit easier to save money in Wanaka than it would be in Queenstown but for the, as for the ski fields in Wanaka you have actually two of what I think personally are the best ski fields in the South Island which is Treble Cone which is the largest ski field in the South Island and Cadrona so but they're actually both they're owned by separate companies so usually if you're only working for one you would have to pay to actually go to the other one for instance um but yeah it's um another really good option if you're all about the skiing then you might just want to he head to Wanaka where it does have some of the best um best ski fields in the South Island uh, is there anything you'd like to add about that um, no, I think I think that a lot of people just forget that there is the one of the largest ski fields in the country on the North Island. Yeah. Um, now, if you uh, if you just want to ski one or two or three or maybe maybe like five times uh, only throughout the whole winter season, then you mostly want to work. You can also definitely work in Christchurch. There's plenty of job opportunities, and then you, it's, it's a short-ish drive to one month hut where you can go and ski over there and uh, do a nice weekend. So it's another option that is definitely worth considering. Yeah. Consi uh, worth considering. Woo, that was a hard <laughs> one. But aside from that, well, you have the best experience. So uh, I mean, I just smile and be pretty on this one, to be quite <laughs> honest. Um, all right, but yeah. And that's basically all the info that we have for you about uh, working on a ski field in New Zealand. Um, check out the article that we put in the description below because we're going to be putting you an article about um, choosing a ski field job, yeah. also what it's like to work on a New Zealand ski field. The best field. ski field on, yeah. of, of, of New Zealand as well. Just, just uh, that's the one I had yeah. in mind. Just, and just to make it really clear though, like the ski fields in New Zealand are usually you are not staying on the ski field when you're working yeah. there. You know, you, you, there's not really accommodation on the ski fields. You don't you know ski to your front door you usually have to get some bus transport to get you know from the nearest town or village to the ski field and quite often there's not even snow where you stay you have to yeah exactly so All you know the you snow know is on the mountains yeah it's yeah. not this this uh the french alps kind of stuff right yeah. you're going to be staying in a village which has mostly mud and rain and you <laughs> then you take the bus up to the ski field that's yeah. basically how it works um yeah we don't really talk about the fact that you can work in the nearest town to the ski field yeah, but exactly. not for the ski field as well so that's also something to keep in mind yeah because like i was saying it's quite competitive especially on the south island to get jobs on ski fields so what i did when i first arrived in new zealand there was no jobs left for working in on the ski, ski fields in queenstown so i ended up working actually at the queenstown airport which is actually really close to one of the ski fields so it just works out that way but the downside obviously is that you don't get the free ski field <laughs> pass but i mean just yeah if that's what you're there to do you just end up paying it anyway yeah yeah so yeah so it's definitely um definitely uh, worth thinking the whole thing and that's why we have so much skipping content on the website so backpackerguide.nz yeah. and all the links are in the description below like subscribe <laughs> everything like that give us some social love at the end of this question thank you very much